let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that may worthy participate in this holy sacrifice. Uh, we're going to move right along today. Thank you very much for coming out on a rather warm and already sticky Sunday morning in the summer. Um, I guess uh, tomorrow will be even worse, so uh, we'll just be grateful for this. And so with that said, please make an examination of your conscience.
Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. God does not always refuse, nurses no lasting anger. And the Lord has compassion the Lord has compassion on the faithful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The other disciples may be doing the same thing. So that seems to be their practice in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
Jesus goes off to pray, but he says, you pray as well. So there's this idea that this community prayed together. But when the disciples watch Jesus, there's something special about his moment of prayer. There, there's just something about the feeling, the look on his face. There's something about it that makes the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray. And then if you're ever on Jeopardy, you can, there's two different Lord's prayers. Matthew is the only one that is the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven. As you heard from Luke, there is no Our Father. This is just simply the Lord's Prayer. So if you're on Jeopardy and they ask which gospel is the Our Father, it's only Matthew. Luke is a different prayer, and hardly any of us ever recite Luke's Lord's Prayer. But you know, the idea is it's not so important about what the words are. It's this idea of communion with God. And so we need to have that time. We need to set aside time for that communion of God. And it doesn't matter where or when. It's just the idea of spending time with God. That's the purpose behind prayer. But I think all of us know, including the priest here at the altar, that the most often prayer that we say is, Lord, can you? And whether it's this or that or whatever, we're always asking God for a favor. You know, I saw in the paper, uh, because up until yesterday, I used to be a Red Sox fan. I've given up now. I can't even <laughs> Minnesota. So there was an article in there about the president of baseball operations. I forgot what his first name is, but his last name is Sullivan. And his father was the rector of the Trinity Church in Boston when he was growing up. And so they asked the father, he said, you know, what, you know, this, this traditional prayer, you know, what do you do? You say prayers at the game. And he says, of course I do. But then he also brought up the fact about, you know, when the pitcher goes out and he gets his game by doing one of these, and then the batter goes up to the batter's box by doing one of these, what does God do? You got the pitcher praying for a good strike, you got the batter praying for a good hit. What does the poor Lord do? And so that's that idea of we got a problem behind it. seek and you shall find, knock and it will be open. And, and what's the other one there about uh, ask and it shall, you shall receive? Luke is writing about 45 years after the death of Jesus. There's a lot of people in his church who have passed and have not received. You know, how many of us have, you know, a lot of people with that, that lottery get the like 400 million dollars. If I win, I'll give the church a thousand dollars. Oh, okay, you need to get 400 million, we'll get a thousand dollars. But the idea is that we pray for stuff, and how many of us have had our prayers not answered? But Jesus says, ask and you will receive. How does that all come together? Doesn't Jesus say, ask you will receive? I've asked for a lot of things, and I've never received them from God. And I think that's part of this idea that goes a little bit deeper in the sermon. I'm not going to deny you to read it online, and something we can talk about tomorrow, a Bible study as well, is that prayer is also about a changed person, not just thought, talking to God. It's about changing us. And Luke makes a really important change. In the tradition that he received, it says in the text, how much more will your Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Luke changes that. How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? It's important what we ask of God. If we're going to ask him for a million dollars, that may not be the kind of prayer that God answers. We are supposed to ask things like, give us more of the Holy Spirit. Let us come into more of a communion with you. That's the only way I can make sense out of ask and you will receive because too often what we ask will not be received. I got a couple of sad prayer intentions here that I'll be sharing with you in a little while. We've been praying for the gift of help, and it doesn't always go that way. Does that mean that God hasn't listened, or is God answering in some other special way? Ways that we can't understand, the ways we only have a little peak of maybe 80 or 90 years in this world, but God is looking at eternity. What does it mean when he says, ask and you will receive, and we don't? Think about that, and then think about, you know, Luke's change that word, pray for good things. Instead, he says, pray for the Holy Spirit. This is one of those mysteries of God. And that's something I can't answer. But hopefully, the more we pray, well, we, maybe we can find our answers together. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We offer our prayer. We offer our prayers at this time for Carolyn Hay, who passed away last week, uh, offered by Linda and Walter Kowalski. We also offer our prayers for Cheryl Anderson, who passed away five years ago on July 20th. It's offered by her loving family. And sadly, we offer prayers for Doug Robinson, who is now in hospice care uh, with no more treatments available for his cancer. We offer these prayers for um, his well-being, spiritual, emotional, psychological. Um, this prayer is being offered by his death daughter, Jenny Whitman, and Karen Herzig. We also offer prayers for Richard Pope, the father of Brandon Pope, who was recent, recently diagnosed with cancer as well. It's offered by the Foster and Pope family. We continue to offer our prayers for Renee Connor, it's offered by Ellen and Donna Krofsky, Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Kostya, Randy Clement by her grandmother Dottie Verona, Father Ray Greta, Jan Bielczyk, and Maurice Lizell, it's offered by myself, and Frank Skrofsky, it's offered by his twin brother Don, Skrofsky, Kate, and Kirk and Donald Hammond. Are there any other prayers that you would like to offer us in the congregation? For all these prayers, Lord, along with the private ones that we bring before you in our thoughts, we ask the Lord to be with all of those who are unable to be with us here today, and those of our parish who have chosen to not be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
As for me, I have walked my innocence, redeem me, and have mercy upon me. My foot is still in my path, and in the church I will magnify and praise you, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive it, Lord, and give this offering to make to you in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. In honor of Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may be available to their honor and to our salvation. And may they intercede for us in heaven, whose memory we celebrate on earth, through the saying of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord Almighty God, receive these offerings that we now place before you, and grant that we, who make our request to you, may be willing to give those who also ask of us. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Throughout all ages of ages. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
You are my friend if you do what I command you. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I am them, and you and me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these and other words of the Archpriest's prayer and his holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body.
test us, grant us the same serenity of spirit which you bestow on the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles, martyrs, and all of those who resolutely march under the banner of our Savior, that being supported by your help, may always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Throughout all ages of ages, But shall you turn unto the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
setting your badges to be acceptable unto you, and through your mercy be effective to myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, 